This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Friday, May 20th. This is how we do it. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with yet another BYU Sports Nation TMZ correspondent. He's joining Jason Shepard. This time, it's Jerem Jordan. First off, you should be wearing eye black. Second off, I can't see you. Where are you? Camouflage for the win. I think you should pull the Tyler Batty and just put all of the eye black as smeared as possible. Tyler Batty is my guy. So you're truly indistinguishable on that side of the side. He's a car guy. He's a camo guy. He's a lip balm guy as well. <laughs> uh, so last night, I'm strolling into the BYU baseball game. Fashionably late with uh, you know my wife and two kids, and I walk by a gentleman and I go, I know who that is, but I can't recall his name. It's Greg Grunberg, uh, an actor who's been in Star Wars, the reboot of Star Trek, and like every episode of any TV show you've ever seen. He's in, yep. he's been in a million things, and so I I didn't remember his name, but I go, hey, welcome to Provo, man. He goes, thanks. Then he goes over and kind of records his kid who plays for LMU. Comes back and I go, oh, is that your kid? He's like, yeah. I was like, that's awesome. So then I'm going to IMDb. I'm like, oh, that's Greg Grunberg. Okay, that's who it is. Yeah, I just didn't have his name. Th- this picture was taken by our social media team. He couldn't have been nicer. Greg was great. Um, he really loved the Cougar Tales. In fact, he posted about it on Instagram. He said, best thing about BYU baseball <laughs> is the three-foot maple donut they call the Cougar Tail. Go LMU Lions baseball. I need a nap. He was super nice. People were coming up and saying hi, wanting some pictures. I assume he's here for the whole series. Great to have Greg in Miller Park. And it was a crazy game as well, which is pretty fun. A walk-off winner, which we will discuss in oh, just a moment. A, a, a walk-off wild pitch, which <laughs> BYU played Utah a couple years ago. I, did, I, didn't, I don't and do much baseball, but I called a walk-off wild pitch BYU-Utah game a couple years ago. And I was like, that's new. Mm-hmm. It happened again last night. Why not? Why not? What okay, no. And more importantly, BYU's back on the winning track, and it was in the West Coast Conference. Classic. They've won eight straight games in the WCC, baby. Crushing it. Let's go. Keep it rolling. Uh, Speaking of winning streaks, here is your show lineup on a winning Friday. Can BYU football put together another winning streak in the month of September Mm. and make it a perfect September to remember? They did it last year when everybody said they probably wouldn't. So should we expect something special this year? Also, we have the new women's basketball coach, Amber Whiting, joins us, making her BYU Sports Nation debut. When did the job come into her radar? And Zach Wilson throwing out the first pitch at the Mets game with his hat on backwards. Colin Coward has issues with that. (laughs) Do you as BYU fans bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines? BYU football is ranked 25th in Stuart Mandel's post Spring rankings in The Athletic. ESPN also updated its post-spring rankings. The Cougars slipped to spots 19 from 18 because USC got Jordan Addison from Pitt. He's a really good receiver. Also, Ben Bywater added to the Lot Trophy watch list, honoring college football's defensive best in character and performance. If cutoff practice shorts are part of the criteria, Bywater will be a finalist for sure. We asked him about that fashion statement. We had a full discussion with him, so if you want to see that, all of the interviews available right now on demand. Just go to YouTube and search Ben Bywater, BYU Sports Just go to YouTube and uh, search Spencer Linton. (laughs) And Jorts. (laughs) I wonder what comes up. (laughs) Or is it, it's, it's Swartz, right? Because it's cut off sweats. I don't know. I don't know what to call that. We'll figure it out. BYU Baseball, as mentioned, defeats LMU 4-3 to to win their eighth consecutive West Coast Conference game. First game of the series last night in extra innings. Josh Cowden is the hero using the wheels to beat the wild pitch and any sort of play that would have happened at home plate. So BYU looking for a series win tonight if they can win game two, 8 Eastern again here at Miller Park. Josh Cowden's a name that sounds like it'd come from like Nauvoo in 1840. Track and field has 59 entrants to the NCAA West preliminaries next Wednesday in Fayetteville, Arkansas. We expect track and field to continue to do work. 
and uh, produce multiple top tens, multiple top, maybe some national titles uh, coming up in a few weeks. Let's in go. June. Let's go, man. BYU softball continues to rake in honors, while not in the West Coast Conference, at least at the NFCA All-Pacific level. It hurts every time we mention softball. I'm sorry. It just does. Violet Zavodnik placed on the NFCA All-Pacific first team, and Hunter Ava and Autumn Moffat korth are on the second team. So Violet's a first-team all-region player, but not the best player in the West Coast Conference. I'm so frustrated. All five women's volleyball incoming freshmen are in the prepvolleyball.com top 150. Hannah Billiter, Eden Bauer, Riley Decker, Natalie Moraveg, and Kate Pryor. Yep. Who presented the season last year, number nine in the ABCA rankings. So recruiting is going really well the last couple years for women's volleyball. Cougs overseas. Brandon Davies scored 15 points, had five rebounds in yesterday's loss to Real Madrid in the EuroLeague semifinals. Mm. Elijah Bryant, 16.6 rebounds in an Anadolu Efes semifinal win. He's in uh, Turkey. Getting bucked. Go, Eli. Well, listen, the Bucks didn't win the NBA Finals this year, and they didn't have uh, Elijah Bryant on the roster. Well, it's man, Elijah Bryant Same. was not there to support. No Sam Merrill, no Elijah Bryant. Don't win an NBA Finals championship. Yep. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Let's make it another September to remember. And that September and the college football season for BYU start in how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. 106. I I didn't know what it was. I was trying to read the list. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> 106 days we didn't do it yesterday so i was thinking it was, thinking 107. It was 107 because it was 108 the day before when we did it i feel like i can read lips like in quick but i could not read it quick <laughs> enough right there 100, 106, 106 days might be, away might be i own that i own that byu football and usf and while we're speaking of byu and usf yesterday the line from our friends in the desert was released for BYU in Tampa against the Bulls. BYU was a 12 and a half point favorite Appropriate. to open up the season, which yeah. has us looking at Fair. September and all of the projections yeah. that BYU will face. We know that BYU is a two and a half point favorite against Baylor at home a week after the season opener. Mm-hmm. And we know that BYU is a six and a half point underdog at Oregon in week three. Then there are games against Wyoming and Utah State. So it's a loaded September, to say the least. This is not news to anybody. And you should also consider this stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Jeremy, when BYU kicks off against USF in September, they will not have lost a September football game in, count them, 1,071 days. BYU has not lost wow. in September in 1,071 days. I didn't realize that this was the case, but it makes sense because 2020, BYU obviously wins until yep. goes to Carolina. Yep. And then BYU started uh, 5 0 last BYU year. BYU won well into October last year. Pretty good. So, my question for you is Will BYU make it three straight undefeated Septembers? I hope so. Uh, they got a shot, man. And by the way, so after you mentioned that this morning, I was like, wow, I didn't realize that. So I thought, how many times does that even happen? Back-to-back 5-0 and starts for BYU football. Zero, except for that. This is the first time BYU history Ever. BYU has started 5-0 and in back-to-back yes. years. Yes. How about that? So uh, the fact that they've gone undefeated September, minimum four games, six times ever. Okay, so it is rare to get that, that first month. And, and I guess I say pre-October to get August and September, but minimum four games, six times. It's not a lot, right? So uh, can BYU can BYU go undefeated again? Last year we were like, yeah, hey Arizona, you should win that game. Arizona State or Utah, like you're gonna lose one of those two. Hopefully you beat Utah. If you lose Arizona State, it's okay. In a similar fashion, um, BYU's got, what, two P5s on this? It was three last year. Granted, Arizona's not really like a P5. <laughs> Boy State's a much better program. Right? Yes. Like Arizona, that's, that's, a, that's typically a win for BYU. In this situation, at USF, that's a win. Baylor at home, mm-hmm. we believe that's a win. Mm-hmm. They lost their Tyler Algier, who ran for 1,600 yards, Abram Smith. 
They lost Jerry Bohannon. Although Blake Shapin at the end of the year went three and zero to end the regular season. Um, they lost Tyquan Thornton to the NFL. They're no they're, uh, receiver. R.J. Snead, they lost to Colorado. They lost their two all Big 12 safeties, Jalen Pitry, 18 and a half tackles for loss. J.T. Woods, five picks. They're gone. At Oregon, new head coach Dan Lanning, new quarterback, Bo Nix. Maybe it's Ty Thompson, who, by the way, went to the same high school as Shaley Gonzalez in Arizona. They play Georgia in week one. They may be beat up and frustrated, although they beat Ohio State last year and then went downhill. Wyoming, got to show up. Utah State won 11 games last year. Mountain West champs, got to show up for that one as well. Pierce got a shot here. I would be, I would be, okay. I, I think BYU, I, I think the minimum for how talented this team against those five is three and two. I feel that strongly. I feel like that I think would be disappointing. One, I think four and one is the, probably, the, that would be my most likely pick for record. And then five and oh would be, would be just friggin' awesome. Three and two would be disappointing based on what BYU has done the last two Septembers and the last two seasons overall. And, and well, combine that with what Baylor and Oregon have lost. And you go, okay, BYU should walk in there pretty confident that they can win that. Baylor is a fantastic program. They are not coming into Provo as good a team as they were last year when BYU faced them in Waco. Yes. They lost a lot of weapons. Think about it. They lost the best quarterback, the top two running backs, and the top two wide receivers, and the top two safeties. Taking nothing away from Dave Aranda. Because he is an awesome head coach, and he is a defensive genius, and he's, I mean, he's done amazing things. And Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos, former BYU guys, like, they had a, an amazing season. They're not the same team coming to Provo. Just based on the numbers, logic would suggest that BYU, with the favorite, playing the favorite card in the five games in September, okay, they're going to go four and one. Uh, this, this feels like four and one, which would be awesome because if so BYU good. starts so four good. and one and they're a preseason ranked team, guess what? They're going to be ranked in the top twenty going into that first game in October against Notre Dame. Fifteen at four and one, bro. Four and one. They'll be t- if they're four and one, they're top fifteen. Like to me, the odds against makers have Taylor spoken. BYU is going to be favored in four of the five games, and I think yeah. they will win four of the first five games. It's yeah. a lot to ask with five games in September. Will BYU have an undefeated September? Because they only played two games in September in 2020 in that weird COVID yeah. scenario. Yeah. They played a tougher September schedule last year, but they didn't play five. And, and you were playing the tough ones at home, home being Allegiant Stadium and Lavelle Edwards Stadium. With Arizona State and Utah? Right. So this time around, they got to go to Oregon, which I, th- I think I, I understand why they're a six-and-a-half-point underdog. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense. It's or- Autzen Stadium. It's yes. Oregon. Yes. Okay. They're one of the powers of the Pac-12. But, man, it would be nice if BYU kept that Pac-12 streak rolling against Oregon. That's a huge game. Like, like Autzen's cool. Fans are good. I've been to a game there before against Cal in 2019 with Herbert. They don't have Herbert. They don't have Thibodeau. Like, it's a talented group. Obviously, Georgia's D.C., um, you know, coming over Dan Lanning is a tremendous, um, you know, coach. We don't know what he is as a head coach. Again, they may be beat up playing Georgia in week one. Like, like, maybe, maybe they're super banged up from playing the most physical team in the country in week one. Sure. BYU's coming in confident in week three, having beaten South Florida, we think, having beaten Baylor at home. <laughs> uh, now BYU's, what, sitting there at uh, 16 or whatever? You go to Oregon, you win that? You move up to, well, like, here, 13, 12, and, if you do, right? Here's the thing. In Independence in the recent past, we've seen BYU lose their home opener twice and then go and win a huge road game after. Most recently in 2018 when BYU lost to Cal – at home, and then went on the road one and one at number six Wisconsin, and we were like, oh boy. And then they beat Wisconsin. That's a seven on the road. six BYU team that beats an eight and five Wisconsin. Yes, a road win against a power five team who wins at least eight games is tremendous. BYU did it again against because, Tennessee. They lost to yes. Utah at home in the opener. So what are you saying? Then BYU's went on the road. Well, I'm just saying, like if you even can, if BYU loses to Baylor, they have this tendency to kind of bounce Oregon. back and win a big game on the road and rally. And, I think the, a win at Oregon would do more for BYU nationally than a home win against Baylor. Ooh, I don't know. Because Oregon has more prestige nationally than Baylor. Baylor had a good season, but they're not considered one of like the top 15 programs in the country consistently. Oregon gets the benefit of the doubt. But Baylor will probably be ranked higher than Oregon of, when the season begins. Right. But I'm telling you, nationally, when people glance over mm-hmm. at that, and if, the, if Baylor and Oregon are ranked the same, like, like if they were ranked the same and you go, what wins better to the average college football fan? They go Oregon. 
because Baylor had a good year, but they're not considered like a consistently like high end program. Oregon totally is. Ah, and Oregon got run over in the Pac twelve last year. Yeah, but at the at the until then, uh, they had beaten Ohio State and were the, were like top ten for a while, right? Yeah. In- interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, again, just based on logic and numbers and percentages, BYU probably I think goes four and one in in five games, which is great. I mean that I would, that would be I would take fantastic. it. I would take it right now. Four and one going into the Notre Dame right game. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Everybody would take that right now. Quick note on the Notre Dame game. What happened yesterday with Texas A&M and Alabama and, and Jimbo Fisher and, and Nick Saban, the only bad thing about this, because it was actually amazing, is that that game is the same day as BYU and Notre Dame. So no matter what, let's say BYU <laughs> and Notre Dame are both undefeated going into that game, both in the top ten. It's the number two storyline in college football because of what? Yeah. That was just insane, and I loved every second of it. Ah, so fun. <laughs> Percentages suggest because BYU plays two power fives in September, they'll win one and lose one. That's basically what BYU has yeah. done. And they'll be favored in the other games against it, the group of fives. That wasn't the case last year. That was an outlier. Yeah. But the chance are, chances are that that happens. Our question of the day, what's the chance BYU football can make it three straight undefeated Septembers? Got to win five games this year to stay undefeated in September. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. Go. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. Blue At BYU alert. Maximus Blue on Twitter alert. answers. Blue I have confidence that Blue BYU can, alert. but think this is BYU's most difficult September schedule yet. Ever? Mm, not ever. No, 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 no. Not, we open not, not with close. Arizona, yeah. but a vastly underappreciated, vengeful USF team on the road cross country in Florida. 91, 04. Those are two that pop for like toughest for September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety one was ridiculous. Ninety one was just was just stupid. ridiculous. Ty's like, I won the Heisman. This is the schedule you give me. <laughs> Hashtag BYU on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah, it's tougher, but yeah. hey, four and one, four and one would be amazing. I'd take it right now, man. Incredible. Coming up, Napoleon Dynamite showed up at the baseball game last night. We'll show you. <laughs> and we introduce you to the newest head coach on campus at BYU. Amber Whiting makes her BYU Sports Nation debut after this. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We expect every individual featured in the Rock video right now to join us in St. George tomorrow, Sandtown Park, noon Eastern, 10 local time on BYU TV and BYU Radio as we are part of the Fan Fest. It's going to be a great time in St. George tomorrow morning. I asked my friends at Vandy Creations to create... Our friends. Sorry, our friends no, Santos, at Bandy Creations to create uh, something on metal that resembles that picture of you that we just showed on BYU TV with oh, that'd the, be fun. the white flowing rocker hair. So I should expect this? Or do they need some more time? <laughs> uh, I don't think they appeased my request. Oh, man. <laughs> it didn't appease you. Yeah. Dang it. We are live into Studio time. B on a Friday. This is BYU Sports Nation. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is our pleasure now to welcome the new head coach of BYU women's basketball. Her name is Amber Whiting. She is joining us from South Carolina where she is busy at work with uh, one of her AAU teams. Coach, great to have you back on BYU Sports Nation, and congratulations as uh, – the new head coach of BYU Women's Hoops. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to be here. When did the opening and this potential of becoming the head coach at BYU hit your radar on a timeline perspective? Um, so the day Judd stepped down, I was randomly in a workout and I opened my phone and I saw it and I was like, holy crap. And the first thing I thought about was my daughter, right? Like I'm you want to commit and play for who you commit for. And so that's my first inclement. I was like, crap, like, I'm glad that she didn't go that way. Um, And then little by little, like it just started coming up and me and my husband sat and looked at each other one day. And I was just like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And he, I've always put my family first, my kids first, everything. And he just said, how about you go bet on yourself? How about you put you first for once? And I was like, okay, let's go. So that's how it came about. (laughs) How big of a shot did you feel like you had? Because obviously you've been really successful coming off the state championship, coach of the year, super successful on the AAU level. To get a Division I head coaching job without having been a, uh, you know, assistant coach, what what did you do to get this job? Because it was an impressive performance by you, I'm sure, in this process to to get this gig. Well, I mean – 
thankful and grateful to the admin to like take me serious. Right. And mm -hmm. for Tom and Brian, but, um, we did a zoom when I was in Texas coaching and it was just, you know, I thought it was just like, it was just very informal, very, and they were doing a lot of people. And so I just, I think I click some light bulbs on, I don't know, flick some, whatever I did. I don't know. I just was myself. And I talked about the direction that I would like to see the program go as an alumnus or, you know, as an outside perspective. And then I know that the job was the knew that the job was going to close. And I just threw my name out there. Like I honestly, I thought I was, you know, I am an underdog. Let's be honest. Right. Like I haven't had any college experience, but I have had a ton on the AAU level. I've coached for 10 years there. My kids, I've helped skill develop my, my husband playing in Europe. I mean, I'm a coach for him. <laughs> so I just, I just knew that like, that was something I've been around my whole life. And so I would just, and I told them if they did that, they were going to catch a lot of heat and they were fine with it. They trusted me. And I, I was so grateful that they just looked at me like who, for who I was. And so I was really grateful for that. What is that direction you mentioned, especially with the Big 12 looming in a year? Um, we got to get better defensively. Like, that's my first and foremost. Um, and I, I talked to some of the girls and of what, you know, where I want to see it go, but we need to get uh, serious with player development. We got to get the best of the best as far as recruiting goes. Um, align our standards with BYU. And I feel like if we start down that direction and I'm one that gets in and we work, we work hard. And no matter, you know, if we take our hits one day, we're going to get back up the next morning. We're going to go again. So I just hope that they take on that mentality of a lot, be tough. We got, we got to go be tough. So the new head coach of BYU women's basketball, Amber Whiting is with us on BYU sports nation. How familiar are you with the women currently on the BYU basketball roster? So I actually coached Emma growing up, um, Emma Calvert. And so she's done that. Um, I was Shaylee's mentor. They lined me up with her. And so I've had lunches a couple times with her and, you know, talked with her and um, my daughter coming down to be recruited by BYU. We um, got to sit in with lunches with them and do things. She played with Nani um, last two years ago. So I'm very familiar. I always watch. We always record all their games. Like I go through them and I mean, super interested. So, yeah. What are the next couple of weeks like as you navigate the current roster and the sell and the buy-in process, right? But also of finding assistance that, that fit and makes sense for you on the staff. Um, I've been doing some interviews already for staff and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to narrow it down. Um, but my first, we got on zoom with the girls and it was, I mean, super awkward because they didn't know who I was. They didn't know what to expect. And, um, then I had Shaylee put me on a group chat with them all and I am have meetings with them all set up because they're my first priority. I mean, yes, the staff is a priority, but those girls, like, they're my first priority. I got, they're my girls now, right? And I got to get to know them and they got to get to know me. And I wish in a perfect world, I could have been introduced to them in person and talked to them. Um, but Zoom is what we got, right? Like they're all over the world. And so I honestly just, that's, I've texted them all and I'm, so excited to get in a gym with them. I'm so excited to just get them in front of me and get to know them on a personal basis. Sure. It's safe to say that the recruiting of your current team has begun because in our day and age, let's face it, that's a thing. Transfer portal, name image likeness. Everybody kind of feels like they deserve the best. They can go where they want. They can play more somewhere else. So how do you approach that scenario with your team, knowing that college sports really are in a position that they never have been before? There's so much volatility and so much transition. Um, I think I, I learned a lot through my daughter's recruiting. I really did. I learned, you know, the person, the, if you're, if you can connect with a player personally, then you're going to get a lot more buy-in. And so I just want to be myself with them. I want to get to know them. They are my girls. And like I said, I love them like my own and they don't know that yet for me, but all players that I've all that I've had over the years, like that's my, that's my thing. Like I can connect to players. And so when I, when you get that connection and you go to work and they know that you're in the grind with them every day that, you know, I'm not putting blame on them after a loss. Like I'm in this with them. If they're not prepared, we got to get ready together. And so that's my thing that um, they're going to learn from me. And I hope that I can help them, you know, like 
I have a couple rules that mentally flip the switch on a court. And I, you know, I can't wait to dive into that with them. And so I hope that they get that, but you know, at the end of the day, if I'm giving them everything that I have, I hope they give what they have to me. And I hope it's a beautiful thing. I hope that we can grow together. It's been beautiful the last couple of years, and this roster is certainly talented. We're very excited about it. Um, I get the sense that you're very competitive. I can just kind of tell from our initial conversation here. <laughs> and it's a basketball family, right? You got you got two kids who play. Yes. Jace is uh, at Boise State, of course. We know Trent and love him. Uh, I, I chat with him because he went to Brazil on his mission, you know, and whatnot. And so, <laughs> and you played in college. So, who's got the best jump shot in the house at this moment? Ooh, ooh. If I say I'm going to get so much heat on my phone right now. <laughs> we, uh, we have no filter in my family, and it is competitive down to the wire. So Jace, when he, he just got back from his mission in Finland, and he, he literally texted the day he was home. He's like, we better get out in the gym tonight because this is the only time you're going to beat me, Mari. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Trent gets out there, and he plays bully ball. He does with my kids, so if they, you know, but and my kids make fun of my shot, and that's okay because I can make them run for it. Like, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who runs the family. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you, now you've had the ultimate validation. You're the women's basketball coach at BYU. There's a certain, there's certain status in the household that just happened, right? <laughs> well, we have, like, so we all have nicknames for each other, right? Trent calls himself Hoff because he's in the Snow College Hall of Fame. And I'm Koi because, you know, coach, coach of the year three times. And Amari was, <laughs> I know, I know. We have this thing. And so Amari, she was player of the year. And we all had our uh, scoring records. So Trent's was 41. Mine was 39 at Snow. And then Jace hit 40-something. Well, then Amari got 44 this last year. Oh. And she... That was her, like, claim to fame. I am, like, for a long time, she couldn't say anything, but now. <laughs> hey, co co coach could have pulled uh, her out, just saying, you know, to protect your I really yourself. could have, and I did, actually. And then I got a lot of heat from my <laughs> I got heat from my assistant coaches. And, like, they were, because like, she was, like, right on the school record. And I didn't know the record. I don't care, right? Like, I don't. And so I was getting texts from to my bench from like, I guess the freshman assistant coaches were texting They were And so I was like, Oh my gosh, you guys are being serious right now. She's one point away. So I put her back in for 30 seconds, let her get it and get back out. Like you don't get to score too much. Let's go. <laughs> Pass the ball. Amber, congratulations yeah. on uh, getting the job. And like you said, uh, being in a position to take a chance on yourself and having it pay off in a major way. Good luck in South Carolina on the AAU circuit. Uh, we'll see you back Thank here you. in Provo whenever you get back. And we look forward to covering you and BYU women's basketball. Perfect. Thank you so much. You got it. The head coach of BYU women's basketball, Amber Whiting, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Feels super competitive in that family, right? Naturally. Trent, like Amber, all, and then all two the, kids uh, are both shooter, high level Division and... One athletes. Yeah. I'm trying to think in my family, like what we can all do well. <laughs> like that's unique to have like the same skill set in the same hobby. You know what I mean? Yes. Pretty unique. Okay, coming up, NCAA regional champ Carson Lundell in studio after his incredible performance in the regional. And have we pinpointed a feud within BYU sports that is as fiery as Nick Saban versus Jimbo Fisher? Just maybe. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on a Friday. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and the TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Brand presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Better feud, Nick Saban versus Jimbo Fisher, or at the time, Max Hall versus Utah. As much as I want to go with BYU-Utah, and it's a fantastic rivalry, this is is of epic proportions. Absolutely. Alabama and Texas A&M, Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher, two of the all-time college football coaches, just taking each other out verbally. It's Saban versus Fisher. It, and it's, it's not even close, and here's why. You fans didn't have a unified voice. They just made some shirts. <laughs> like, that was it. Max Hall hates me. <laughs> and it was like, yes, and he's not the only one. But, yeah, no. It's a great feud. Hilarious. And, and the curse of Max Hall is over. 
It just took him coming back to run out the flag with his son and uh, Tyler Huntley saying they so poo poo yeah. to reverse the curse, right? <laughs> <laughs> Reverse the curse. Like it. Zach Wilson threw out the first pitch yesterday at the New York Mets game. Later in the broadcast, he was shown in the stands, which led to the following conversation. Listen to this. His play on Sunday afternoons. Yeah. Will he talk to you, Steve? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah, guys, I think I'm going to let him be. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, ah, he likes the mook. Keith, either that or it's his own name. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't see what number it is. Not, he's not wearing number one. Well, I one. didn't see the number. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, Jerem, was Keith Hernandez saying Zach was wearing a Mookie Wilson jersey better or worse than Alex Cordry's BYU Tigers moment? Congratulations to your BYU Tigers. <laughs> your Tigers is worse. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, that's not even close. Although in the feline family, uh, clearly Keith Hernandez does not know who Zach Wilson is. His la- last name is Wilson, and he was, it was number two. And the Mets gave him the jersey because he threw the first pitch. It just makes sense. Yes. Come on. I, look, I'm sure there are plenty of Mookie Wilson jerseys floating around that area of New York or not. <laughs> he clearly was wearing a jersey that had his own last name on it. Yeah, That's, the BYU uh, Tigers, okay. yikes. But the Mookie Wilson thing, super funny. Yeah. Women's volleyball's five incoming freshmen all ranked in the top 150. Does this solidify the Cougars in a spot to continue to compete immediately in the Big 12? They're already in a spot to compete immediately in the Big 12, quite frankly. But, yeah. You got to keep that. Yeah, the pipeline going. Line, sure. Pipeline. Yeah. yeah like, they, they can compete. Well, I'm saying, like, right now, the roster is young enough and talented enough that, like, they could go into the Big 12 next year and the year after, and, and they could compete immediately. But, like, if you want to compete like retroactively, in three, and three, yeah, then you need those. But, yeah, uh, immediately Plus right now, forward, this this will help them, you know, two to three to four years into the Big 12, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, and BYU has freshmen who come in and make an impact every year. Who did it better, Napoleon Dynamite or the kid from <laughs> this game last night, BYU Baseball, Jerem? I saw this kid at the game, and this was pretty good. You know we can't afford the fun pack and pulling on? <laughs> he has the moon boots and everything, by the way. Like the full gear. <laughs> Shout out to everybody involved. Because this was awesome. Yep. It's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. It's fantastic. It's hard to beat Can the goat John the Heater in this instance. Like, I mean, he stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon close Dynamite. Second. It's close second. That's a close yeah, yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, the kid yeah, is no. a close Shout second. Out to that kid. Coming up, which musician who shouted out the Cougars last night at his concert is going to be in today's Rise and Shout? And to represent the latest intense manifestation of the BYU Sports Nation karma, Carson Lundell joins yeah. us. Yeah! He maximized it to the fullest. Winning the regional! We're going to talk about what's next for BYU Golf and Carson in the NCAA Championships. This is BYU Sports Nation. The champ is here. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball looks to win the series tonight against LMU after an extra inning win last night. Watch the game at 8 Eastern on BYU TV or listen live on the BYU Radio app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live on a Friday from Studio B or the Studio Bizzle. I don't say that we'll, enough. We'll be in Studio St. George tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need, Town we, Park. We need, we need more Studio Bizzle. Yes. We got in the Big 12 in spite of that. Yeah. Jo- joining us now in the studio, Bizzle, after a huge win, and he's the medalist of one of the six regionals in NCAA men's golf is Carson Lundell. Carson, congratulations, man. Nice work. Thanks. That was awesome, man. That was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's putting it lightly. Wait, just every day we're like, sub 68, 69, 69, <laughs> like just incredible. So when did you find out? Because there are so many moving parts at a regional. Yeah. There's so many players. It's hard to know, like, Wait, am I gonna win or like? Wait, did I actually win? Like, how how did that all happen? Yeah, no, it was kind of crazy because I was I think I was like five under through eleven, and I was just just playing extremely well. Maybe I was four. I can't. I honestly I don't even know. But I figured that because I was I was the two kids I was playing with were also tied with me in the lead going into that day, and I was beating them pretty good. And so I was kind of figured like, all right, like I think I've got a good chance at this. And then the second you start <laughs> thinking that, I bogey. Four and five, well, I guess my 14th and 15th hole, and I'm just like, all right, reset, reset. Like, 
And uh, I birdied the next after after coming off two bogeys, and and I talked to our coaches, and I was just like, hey, like, is anyone making a run at us? Like, it seems like everyone's playing pretty well on our team. Like, how are we looking? And uh, and they're like, we've we've got a good cushion. And then I said, do we have a chance to win the tournament? And they said, well, it might be a little bit out of reach. And I said, all right, great. And then Todd came up to me and he said, hey, like, you're gonna win this tournament. I'm like, all right. And he's like, let me hear you say it. I was like, all right, I'm gonna win this tournament. And from there, it was just like, just had to finish out the last three holes and and try to stay calm and and because they're not easy holes. Well, I was just gonna not say, easy holes. how do you stay calm in that I moment? I know. Yeah, no, I think it definitely, honestly, helped a ton to know that we had a good cushion with the team, so that I wasn't just playing for myself and the team and carrying all that pressure. Because you go there as a team, right? You you go there as a team to win, to qualify for the national championship, and the individual stuff is all just extra. You know, you just want to play well to get your team there. And so I had three holes left and they told me we have a good cushion, like it's your time to to go in. And I was and it honestly took a huge kind of, you know, breath breath of fresh air. I was like, all right, like like it seems like we're in. And now, you know, let's just finish the job. Play calm. Yeah. So walk us through those last three holes and did you have a moment where you were like, Yeah, I'm winning this? No, I didn't. I didn't. So I did I never knew where I where I stood. I never knew where I stood. Is that good or bad? Like mentally in this. Um, I, I don't know. It's that's a tough question. It kind of goes back and forth. But I could have looked if I wanted. I could have asked the coaches, but I just, I, I, I didn't want, you know, I guess to know exactly where I was at. But so hole seven because we te- we teed off on ten, the back nine. So seven, my sixteenth hole, I hit a great tee shot, great second shot. I'm like, all right, like the greens were really fast, and I had like a twenty footer for birdie. I'm like, all right, let's just give this a good run. I hit it like five feet past. I'm like, the one thing you can't do when you're trying to win a golf tournament, <laughs> leave yourself a five footer coming back. And luckily I made it. Um, then hole eight or my 17th hole is like a 230 yard par three. And the wind's just humming. It's mm. just blowing like 20, 30. And, Oof. and we have like a 15 minute backup. And I'm like, this is just great. Like sitting uh, in that yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunate, I mean, fortunate enough, I, I hit probably the best shot I'd hit the entire tournament. I don't think if you gave me 20 more balls, I could have hit it inside of where I hit it. And wow, yeah, I made a good made a good par. And then my final hole, I didn't hit a great tee shot. And and Coach Summerhays and Miller were kind of over with me. And Coach Summerhays started to walk off. And and Miller was like, Hey, Summer, like, like let's make sure we got this right. And that's when I was like, Whoa, Miller's never done that. Like, I must I must be in a good spot. And I hit a great shot. And into the green about 15 feet and all my teammates and our friends and family just started cheering going and nuts miller started shaking me i'm like all right like i think i think i've got a good chance to win you're like so did i win now or? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it was <laughs> that's awesome yeah and then i just over the pot i was just like all right give it a chance but you know at worst a comfy par and i did and I turned to miller i said did i win he said i think you did and it was pretty cool we were discussing yesterday kind of individual accomplishment this year at BYU. We think it's top five among everybody in, in what they did. It was pretty cool. I, I, we think, uh, you know, Connor Mance and Whitney weren't winning the national championships across country on the same day. That's oh, yeah. probably number one. I mean, yeah, and that's, then it's a that's good, tough to beat. Then it's a good debate, dude. Like, what, it, what did it mean to you to win a regional? Like, it's, it's awesome to win tournaments. Yeah. That tournament is another level. Yeah, yeah. The regional, I mean, it's as big as a tournament as you can play in college besides the national championship. And, I mean, there's only six throughout the country. And obviously I wanted to win. I thought I could win. I believed I could. And, you know, I've throughout my career, I've had four times where I've tied for first for the lead for the win. Twice I've lost in a playoff. And, oh. and this I is first outright. This is the first outright win. Oh, and man. so it just made it all that. What sweeter. a way to do it. That's yeah. cool. Carson Lundell is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now we got to push forward to the NCAA championships. So you've got your medalist honor. You're riding high. But now you go to Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, what do you know about the course, and how do you feel about going to play against the top 30 teams or being one of the top 30 teams competing in that tournament? Yeah. No, it's, that's what we play for the entire season. That's what, that's what we play for. And, I mean, obviously it helps coming off a win. But, I mean, just as a team, I think we're just we're so excited. You know, I think we, every, every single person on the team stepped up this, this last week, every single one. And I think – and I still don't think we – had you know even our B plus game B B game. wow really yeah and I've, I've talked exciting. to a bunch of guys on the team and 
I mean, I, yeah, I think, you know, we're just going to work really, really hard these next few days. And I, yeah, I think we're all just can't wait to get out there and, and play. It's going to be a ton of fun. You went to Tucson on your mission? I did. Arizona means a lot to you then. Arizona, like, like, like these two events, home. right? Yeah. Pretty, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that you're in the NCAA championships, remind me, a Sunday play thing? You got to yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. So BYU? Oh, you, so, yeah. so are you going to, and, and we uh, walked through this with the women a couple of years ago, but and you guys have been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, remind, remind us how that's going to work. Are you guys going to play by yourselves one day? Going to play by ourselves. So, so, we, so we get in on Tuesday, and our practice round is Wednesday directly following the final round of the women's championship. Uh-huh. And then Thursday, all the other teams play their practice round. And after their practice round, guys, the committee goes out, changes the pins, mows, cuts the greens, rolls them. And then we tee off that afternoon and play solo. <laughs> On the whole course by yourself. The entire course, we've got it all to ourselves. Is that awkward <laughs> be, or is it awesome? No, I, uh, so I, I played my freshman year we, at the Blessings Club in Arkansas. And I didn't really know what to expect. But it's like I was actually this morning talking to Robbie Bosco and he just about it. And and I actually just I told him it's probably one of the most memorable things I've ever done in my wow. golf career, because it's like you have this amazing golf course. You have five of your best buddies who you've grinded the entire season with and you've got it all to yourself in the biggest stage. And it's like you look, <laughs> you look forward and you got five five holes of Cougars just solo. And it's like. It's so fun. It's like the coolest thing ever. It's the most physical manifestation of Sabbath observance that <laughs> yeah. exists. You know what I mean? Like when you go by the Sabbath, you're just like, yeah, I did a good job here. That it's like, no, we, we, we have a thing we believe in and we're out here. And the, and the NCA honors that. And that's cool. No, it's, that's it, cool, it's awesome. That's awesome. It's super fun. You mentioned Daniel Summerhays. What kind of a difference has he made having been a PGA guy on your game and your approach this year? Yeah, I mean, we're we're so lucky. Like, it's so funny. Like talking to all the other teams who we play with, they're like, "Is that a, is that Summer Hayes?" I'm like, "That's that's right. That's, that's Summer Hayes. That's, yeah. that's Daniel." And like, not to mention Miller and 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 Coach Brockbank. It's like, I mean, that's you know, fun. we just have so much support. And adding Coach Summer Hayes and his knowledge of you know the game everywhere he's been, the PGA Tour, you know, experience. Like, we're just so lucky. And he's just more than you know, willing to share everything he, he can with us in order for us to succeed and just believes in us. Fantastic. We, we were in school at the same time when he was oh, were you? winning oh, cool. the good win at yeah. Stanford yeah. and everything. He's just crushing it. Yeah. Okay, well, we gave Coach Brockbank a huge dose of the BYU Sports Nation karma, and apparently it paid off. You know, apparently he gave a lot of it to you. So we're going to give you, you another dose. you here recently. Yeah, yeah. Like, well. Yeah. Take some more yeah. karma. Uh, did you sign the flag last time you were here? I don't think I did. Okay, we're well, going to have you sign the flag during the, during yeah. the commercial yeah. break. Yeah. We need your yeah. autograph. Perfect. Thanks for coming in. Good Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you for having me. Okay, coming up. Hey, who going to get that elite voice of the day? And which BYU power couple is the most competitive? Mm. And more importantly, the champion of what you're about to see next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Okay. The official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Station, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. Question, what happens when you take two BYU baseball power couples and pit them against each other in a fun competition? Well, you make Kiki Solano the referee, and then you have a fun segment on BYU Sports Nation. Enjoy. It is Kiki Solano here, and I am joined by some of the power couples of BYU athletics. You guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm Cole Gamble. I'm part of the baseball team here at BYU. And I'm Lauren Gamble, and I'm Cougarette. Um, I'm Kenzie Kerber, and I was on the volleyball team this last season. I'm Nate Daly, and I currently play baseball here at BYU. Because they have competed at very high levels, I assume that we have some competitive personalities here. Kinda. Kinda? (laughs) Kinda. (laughs) (laughs) We're gonna put that to the test. They're gonna be competing against each other, and we're gonna see who wins the most games. Inside of one of the cups is M&Ms, inside the other is nothing. You will be transferring the M&Ms to another cup using just straws. No timer, it's just as fast as they can go. But it'll take some practice. It'll take some practice. We got a bit of a system going over here. This is hard. <laughs> you guys can swap. You can swap. I'm laughing too hard. Okay, okay, I need a break. Take a break. Okay, ready. Fine, I'm going to pass out. Five, you can't can, come can, at an angle. We got two more. Come on, Nate. Winners! Okay, how many more did you guys?
guys have left? Oh, uh, listen to me. Uh. This time, they are going to be using the cups, and they're going to stack through all of them. Whoever gets through to the bottom of the stack of cups first wins. You guys ready? Yep. Yes. She got out of the cup it? already. What? She's, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Hey, sorry. We're good now. Ready, set, go. Go, oh. Nate! Nathan! <laughs> You have to let go with that hand. Why? You can't have oh, two hands. One hand at a time, one hand at a time. Go. Yeah, OK, there we go. We're getting rhythm here. Oh. OK, you can't God. drop it. Why? Because it's going to fall. I can't be holding it. That's why I have to hold the hand. You, you got to let go when I hold it. Okay, you got to move your fingers. Come on, come on, faster, faster. We can be better. Come on. There it is. Yay! Woo! Okay. Yeah, we got to be better. You guys were only three away. Yeah. We're on to the next game. You guys are ready to make a comeback, right? Yes. This time, they will be blowing up a balloon and pushing off the cups onto the ground um, by releasing the air in the balloon. Ready, set, go. <laughs> oh my oh my God. God. As you can tell, they are blindfolded for this game. The objective of the game is to get as many cotton balls as they can into the cup, while of course they can't see. Gather some closer. I can't tell where they and are. Just feel. <laughs> How is that going to help? Just feel. Okay, and chill. the timer starts now. Oh, Cole got one in. Wow, Kenzie, cool. OK. Come on, little Ooh. cotton, cotton. I'm going to take some of yours. Like Your cup was over there, I think. <laughs> Three, two, one. Wait, I want one. Time. You got none? I can't <laughs> see. No, no. I got three. How many did you get, Kenzie? Four, five. five. How many did you, did you get any more? No. Well, Everyone has I almost knocked it I'm over. I'm the most athletic in the relationship. Yeah, pick it up. Oh, I'm also the most aware of your surroundings, yeah. apparently. In this final game, what they will be doing is the ladies will be taking as many sticky notes and sticking it to the guy's face, starting now. Your face is only like. Sorry. <laughs> Don't breathe, OK? <laughs> Don't breathe. Great strategy. She's pushing down hard. Three, two, and one. Um, <laughs> no, it's I'd say okay. we need to count. I don't think we necessarily need yeah. to count. Oh, got it. <laughs> it's okay. They had to finish on a win. Three games won over here. <laughs> two games won over face. here. I thought you guys were going to be competitive, and you definitely, definitely were. I was going to say, Let's were we start. not? You were, absolutely. Cool. Lauren, how do you guys feel it went? I started out a little slow. You know, a little, a little, little giggly, <laughs> little giggly. I'm really happy excited to be here. Um, but you know, we we improved as we went. Definitely so, made progress. A lot of fun. Definitely wasn't ready for any of these. <laughs> <laughs> and to our winners, Kenzie and Nate. Ladies you know, first. you know, you won, but you Ladies were hard first. on yourself. Sometimes you gotta be intense and have some initiative. And I think Nate did a good job at taking some feedback and working on some oh, strategies. Yeah. So, I know. You guys are all great. Thank you so much. If we do this again, maybe now you'll be warmed up for some really <laughs> weird games. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, yeah, Keith. No, thank, you. Yes, thank you. Fantastic stuff. Power that was couples. Awesome. The, co the competitive nature came out hard there. Nate Daly, Kenzie Kerber, your champions yeah. of whatever we're calling that. Kenzie Kerber, we already knew <laughs> she was intense. Nathan. <laughs> you didn't get any? <laughs> that was hilarious. But they won. The competitive edge. Gamble's bringing it. I uh, love them. That the was sticky great. notes moment was, was probably my Th favorite. That's a hilarious that. game. Holy cow. Here's the thing. If I played that with my wife, she's slapping me in the face <laughs> whack, on purpose. Whack. Yep. <laughs> Our question of the day. What's the chance BYU football can use that competitive advantage and, and slap edge Oregon in the face? And make it three straight oh. undefeated Septembers. Our elite voice of the day presented oh, by Sundance Mountain Resort from at quick underscore Rick. This is good. Oh, there's definitely a La Chance. Yeah! Hashtag no doubt. Listen, oh, shout out to Harris, La Chance. Listen, some of those get by the goalie sometimes. Okay. That one. <laughs> that was good. Just. Solid. Just. The, the stick handling was tremendous. That was like, that was like the uh, battle for Alberta. <laughs> Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give it to... Uh, a guy who's been on BYU TV's airwaves, Grace Notes, Ben Rector, indie pop star. Oh, B-roll! Okay, at a concert last night, which I was at, gave a shout-out to BYU amidst one of his songs and uh, got a ton of cheers from BYU fans, not so many cheers from the Utah and Utah State fans in attendance. We don't care. 
We know where his loyalties lie with BYU. Watch him on Grace Notes with Michelle Williams of Destiny's Child. That's so pretty cool. cool, right? Great episode. That's awesome, yeah. Our thanks to today's guests, Amber Whiting, new head coach of BYU Women's Hoops, and Carson Lundell, BYU Men's Golf. Sorry to Dennis. No time. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Johnny Miller. We'll see you tomorrow, noon Eastern, from the BYU Fan Fest, live in St. George, Utah. Go Cougs.